Hello and welcome back. As I mentioned in the last video, uh, in this video we're going to work through an application problem that involves uh, projections. Um, so as I, as I had mentioned before, projections are a way of decomposing a vector. It gives us a nice formula to decompose a vector and not have to think too hard about it. So one situation in which we might have to decompose a vector is in a situation like this, where we have a block on an inclined plane, or really any object, uh, on an inclined plane, and there is some, uh, right, the block has a weight, so that corresponds to a gravitational force pulling it directly downward, which is at some angle to the inclined plane. Now, we want to take that, that weight, that gravitational force pulling it down, straight down, and we want to decompose that into the part of the force that goes along the inclined plane, that's this guy here, this green one, and the part of the force that goes directly into the plane, orthogonally, or normal, perpendicular to the plane. Why is that? Why do I want to decompose this? Well, the green vector, the one that's parallel to the plane, is going to tell us how much of the force is contributing to pulling the object down the plane. The, um, the part of the force that goes into the plane, orthogonal to the plane, uh, is the part of the force that's going to contribute to the uh, to the friction, right? Uh, the friction force that's going to oppose the motion is going to be uh, some uh, is is going to be the coefficient of uh, friction times the amount of force that's going into the plane. So it's going to be coming back this way, and we get a hold of that by knowing how much of the gravitational force goes into the plane. So if we can decompose the force vector into these two things, we'll be set on our way for figuring out how this block is going to move down the plane, whether or not it moves, or uh, at what acceleration it's going to go down the plane, these sorts of things. All we're going to do in this one is just decompose the force vector. Now, I remember when I took physics, when I was taking uh, physics in, in high school, I really hated these types of problems. And that's because we didn't, uh, we didn't really have all of these tools uh, of, of projections and dot products to help us. It makes the calculations so much easier. Uh, so let's see this in action. So let's say we have a 10-pound block resting on an inclined plane that is uh, at 30 degrees. So this is my situation. Here's my block. And it's 10 pounds. Pounds is a measure of force. So that's the magnitude of this force vector. I'm going to call this F for my force vector. And the fact that it's 10 pounds means my force vector and the 10 pounds are going completely downward is going to look like 0, negative 10. So that's, that's my force vector. And then I want to decompose this into the part that goes along the plane and the part that goes uh, into the plane. So these two vectors are going to contribute to, to this. Uh, so maybe I should give names to these. Do we have names? We have parallel component and normal component. Uh, let's call this the parallel component uh, to the plane. How about I call this just FP? Maybe you have different notation you want to use here. That's totally fine. It's up to you how to name these. I'll call that FP and F normal. How about that? In such a way that these combine to give us F, right? That's the whole idea is I'm producing, I'm taking a vector F, and I am writing it as this FP or parallel to the plane plus the part of the force that is normal to the plane. So in order to do this, I need to project F onto the plane. I need a vector here, though. I need to know what is this vector uh, associated with, uh, with the plane. Uh, so what I could do here is I could write my vector. Uh, well, if we want to do this, let's have our vector. So maybe our tail is here for the plane. And maybe this whole thing, maybe this whole thing is the vector. It doesn't matter, it, it doesn't matter actually which vector we use here for the plane, um, as long as we use one that's parallel to the plane. So I also need to keep that in mind. What is the vector that corresponds to the plane? 
I know this is at an angle of 30 degrees, so how best, uh, how best to do this? So this would be 30 degrees, this would also be 30 degrees. How best to do this? What, what could I represent this angle as? Um, well, I just know, I really just know the direction of this, right? I don't know how long the plane is, and I don't really need to know how long the plane is. I just need to know the direction of the plane. So it, uh, we can think of this like uh, the unit circle, right? Think of this like this. We have 30 degrees here. So let's just pick a unit vector. Let's say the length of this, let's force the length of this to be one because it doesn't really matter. And we have a unit vector and the angle is 30 degrees here. So that means we have this length here is going to be cosine 30 degrees. And this is going to be minus sine of 30 degrees. We'll be that quantity there. And so that means our, our vector that corresponds to the plane, I'm just going to call this P plane, cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2, and sine of 30 is 1 half, so this is going to be negative 1 half. And now I'm going to take my force vector and project it onto this plane vector. So here's my plane vector P, like this, and now I'm going to project it onto there. So what we want, FP then, right, in terms of projections, FP is going to be the projection is going to be the projection of my force vector F onto the plane P. And so I can write that then as what F dot P over magnitude P squared or p dot p. But as I know, I chose p to be a unit vector because we didn't care really about the length. So that's just one, so magnitude p squared is one, so this is really just f. Oh, ooh, I've made a mistake here. Anyone caught it? All I have here is a scalar, but I'm talking about the, the orthogonal projection, which is a vector. Remember, it's this scaling the vector p, the direction of p. So yeah, magnitude p squared is just one, so I really just need to compute f dot p. How about I do that up here? f dot p is here. f is this one, so zero times square root of three over two, that's zero, and then negative 10 times negative one half, that is five. So f dot p is five. And then in the direction of p, so this is five, times the vector square root of three over two minus one half. So that's, uh, maybe combine it, that's five square roots of three over two, negative five half. And that checks out, right? We know it goes to the right. Now we have exactly how much it goes to the right, five square root of three over two, and it goes down a little bit, negative five halves. So that's this FP. Now how do we get a hold of the normal vector? Well, Ah, here's where the algebra of vectors comes into play. I know what f is. I know the, the components for f, and now I know the components for p. And I know that f is fp plus fn. And so what that means then is that f minus fp is equal to fn. So I just need to take my force vector f and subtract my fp here, and that gives me fn. We can do that pretty easily. Zero minus five square root of three over two, so that's negative five square root of three over two. And then minus fn, so f minus fn, so that's negative 10 minus five half, minus negative five halves, so that's 10, so that's 20 halves, sorry, negative 20 halves, plus five halves, that's negative 15 halves, is my Fn. Um, so cool, so now I have Fp and I have Fn. Fn. And here is my, so 
I've now decomposed my force vector into the part along the incli inclined plane and the part going into the inclined plane. Again, like I said, the next steps in figuring out how this system is going to change would be to, we would need to understand the coefficient of kinetic friction, coefficient of static friction, um, and um, yeah, and we would go with that. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.